shut up, you stay nasal and listen. You look around the world. Of order, I order. want you to shut up. Oh, I really order. do want you to Honourable shut up. President. Because order. Honourable, order, Honourable Members continues to make a noise oh, and Chairperson. is not listening. Order, Honourable Members. Honourable President. Honourable President, will you just take your seat, please? Why are you rising, Honourable Stephen Aysen? Uh, House Chairperson, the Honourable President told me to shut up. <laughs> I'd like him to answer, but shut up is unparliamentary. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna hurl EFF members out for telling him for deliberately leaving Honourable the house, President, the rule must will, apply will to him. He must please. withdraw. I am prepared to withdraw, but I'd like. Honorable Stian Hazen to listen. Welcome back to Bombus Media Entertainment and thank you for the little milestone of episode one of our mini political series, where our first longer form video received more than 1,000 video views. If you haven't watched episode one, make sure to watch that. This is episode two of our mini political series. If you enjoy our South African content, please subscribe, leave a like, and you can follow us across our social media platforms for more content. In the vibrant city of Johannesburg, amidst the sprawling townships and bustling streets, a young Cyril Ramaphosa was born into a South Africa grappling with the oppressive grip of apartheid. Raised in the heart of Soweto, Cyril's childhood was marked by the injustices of segregation and racial discrimination. From an early age, Cyril showed a keen interest in justice and equality. His parents, both activists in their own right, instilled in him a sense of duty to fight against the apartheid regime. As a student, Cyril eagerly joined the anti-apartheid movement, participating in protests and rallies, his voice echoed with the chance of change. As apartheid crumbled under the weight of international pressure, Cyril's involvement in the African National Congress grew. His charisma, intelligence, and negotiation skills quickly propelled him into positions of leadership within the organization. In the early 1990s, Cyril played a pivotal role in the negotiations that led to the end of apartheid, sitting at the same table as Nelson Mandela and other iconic figures. However, as South Africa transitioned into democracy, Cyril's journey took a different turn. Eager to contribute to the country's development, he ventured into the world of business. His entrepreneurial spirit led him to amass considerable wealth, as he became one of the country's most successful businessmen. Yet, with wealth came scrutiny. Critics accused Cyril of abandoning his roots, trading his principle for profit. The turning point came in 2012 with the Marikana massacre. As a board member of the mining company involved, Cyril found himself at the center of a national scandal. The violent crackdown on striking miners left dozens dead and cast a shadow over Cyril's reputation. Despite denying any direct involvement in the decision-making process, he faced intense criticism and calls for accountability. Nevertheless, Cyril's ambition remained undeterred. In 2017, he successfully campaigned for the presidency of the ANC, defeating his rival in a closely contested race. With his election of ANC leader, Cyril positioned himself as the face of a new era for South Africa, promising to tackle corruption, stimulate economic growth, and address the country's pressing social issues. In February 2018, following the resignation of President Jacob Zuma, Cyril was sworn in as the president of South Africa. His inauguration speech struck a chord with many South Africans who saw him as a beacon of hope for a brighter future. Yet, the road ahead was fraught with challenges. Today, we reaffirm our determination to work with our sisters and brothers across the continent to realize the African Union's vision of Agenda 2063, to build the Africa that all Africans want. 
Despite our most earnest efforts, many South Africans still go to bed hungry. Many South Africans succumb to diseases that can't be treated. Many live lives of intolerable deprivation. Cyril faced internal division within the ANC, with factions loyal to his predecessor still exerting influence. Economic challenges, including high unemployment rates and sluggish growth, tested his leadership skills. Moreover, corruption remained a persistent issue, undermining public trust in the government and hindering progress. Despite the obstacles, Cyril pressed on. He initiated several reforms aimed at revitalizing the economy, attracting foreign investments, and creating jobs. His administration launched inquiries into allegations of state capture and corruption, signaling a commitment to transparency and accountability. Yet, progress was slow, and many South Africans grew impatient. Some accused Cyril of being too cautious, while others questioned his ability to delivery on his promises. Nevertheless, Cyril remained resolute, determined to fulfill his vision of a prosperous and inclusive South Africa. As the nation approached the 2019 general elections, Cyril faced the ultimate test of his leadership. With the ANC's popularity waning and opposition parties gaining ground, the outcome of the elections hung in balance. In May 2019, South Africans went to the polls, casting their votes in what many describes as the most crucial elections since the end of apartheid. The results were a mixed bag. While the ANC retained its majority, its share of the vote decreased, signaling growing disillusionment with the party. Cyril acknowledged the challenges ahead, pledging to listen to the concerns of all South Africans and work towards building a better future for all. Um, the problems that we are facing here in Amzama are this, the sewages that are blocked. Um, I think because of that is our overpopulation and also the gangsterism, people getting robbed whenever we have to go to work in the morning and the, 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 the water, water supply is very bad and also sometimes with the electricity. It's been a while like I'm waiting for my 350th rand. They keep saying that I must wait for an SMS but the SMS it didn't never come back. It didn't ever, like, I didn't ever receive the SMS. And the residents' concerns were witnessed firsthand by Ramaphosa. Just as you enter this place, Nomzam, you are just met by a very strong stench of sewage, which is running throughout the streets. As Cyril Ramaphosa's presidency entered its second term, the journey continues. His legacy remains a subject of debate with some hailing him as a visionary leader and others criticizing him for falling short of expectations. Yet, one thing is certain, Cyril Ramaphosa's story is far from over, as he continues to navigate the complexities of leading a nation in transition. Thank you for watching episode 2 of our political mini-series. Good luck to all South Africans for this elections, make your vote count. If you like our South African content, don't forget to leave a like. Comment down below who you are voting for and don't forget to subscribe. To end the video, let us leave you with the following. Well, we know he is in the hearts and minds of almost every mature South African based on the office he occupies at the union buildings. But now he has taken it up a notch, pulling all the stops to win over the youth. Well, as the ANC campaign runs hot, President Cyril Ramaphosa has taken on a new day job, it seems, introducing DJ Ramapops.